Live from Palo Alto, it's theCUBE. Covering Women Transforming Technology 2017. Brought to you by VMware. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Women Transforming Technology Conference held at VMware here in beautiful Palo Alto, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I am joined by Nicola Acut. She is the Vice President of Sustainability Strategy here at VMware. Nicola, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure, Rebecca. Great to be with you. So I want to start out by talking to you about how VMware is thinking differently about sustainability and devising uh, devising its strategy. Yeah, great. Well, you know, sustainability is something that's not really new at VMware. Um, we've been doing sustainability for many, many years. Um, but what is new is we've rethought our strategy and we've rethought how we frame and think about it. And that starts with the business and what we actually do in the world. And um, this is what's really exciting to me. You know, we've done a lot of very responsible things from the design of the campus here in Palo Alto, which you've seen, um, our LEED certified buildings, and um, the work that we do in philanthropy and community. And now what we're doing is pulling it all together under this concept of collective impact. And for us, that's about the sum of the parts and really about ultimately how we leave a legacy and impact as a business, but starting with what we do. And I think that that's the, the, what you're saying is so important in the sense of for corporate social responsibility, there has to start with the business case of, of why you're doing this, but then there's yeah. also this legacy part to it too. So, so talk a little bit about what you're thinking there. Yeah, well, uh, glad you asked, Ben. It's a large part of why we have, uh, as we rethought sustainability, we put this role in our office of the CTO. And, and for that exact reason, because it's about you know, what, do, what is the legacy we create, not just um, in, in our industry, but for the world. So we talk about you know, my role uh, in the office of the CTO is very much about helping to inspire engineering for impact so that we, you know, our mission is about creating not just the most innovative software in the world, but for the world. So we think about you know, the, the impact, the legacy impact VMware has had in the data center, which is one thing I can talk about, the, you know, the environmental impact of that, but then also looking forward in how we enable access to technology, the platforms to, to really to change the world, whether it's you know, providing solutions for farmers in rural parts of, of India or Africa, or you know, down the street. Um, it's this, this view of how does VMware's technology help create a better, better place, a better world. Well, just the fact that you're in the office of the CTO is such a dramatic change from so many companies. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you think about the bad rap that sustainability gets, it, it, corporate greenwashing and things right. like that, but to put it at the core of VMware's business, that is a very dramatic difference. What was the, what was the impetus for that? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, um, I think before we were talking about, yeah, I've been at VMware for several years and I, you know, been on a journey myself in, in what we do and uh, started working in the foundation um, and have moved into this role in the CTO office. And part of that was about how we um, you know, came to this, under, this, this perspective of what is the, the impact that we want to create and how do we want to um, go beyond sustainability to collective impact. And that was about this idea of net positive. How do we create a legacy where the sum of the parts are greater than the pieces? And um, I'll tell you a little story. You know, when I first joined VMware, I remember um, people t describing the impact um, from an efficiency point of view in the data center. And um, I was always fascinated by that question. Um, and finally, last year, we did a piece of work together with IDC to actually quantify that impact. Um, and so for the first time, we were able to get the data and look at the legacy impact that we've had, and the numbers are astounding. And um, when you look at what VMware and our customers have done over the last 13 years, it's the equivalent of avoiding 340 million metric tons of CO2 going into the atmosphere. It's a pretty astounding number, right? So what does that mean? It's the equivalent, we worked it out, it's the equivalent of um, powering 43 million homes, which is like the, about 43% of US households for a year. A year? For a year. Isn't that incredible? 
Yes. And it was that, <laughs> yes. so that, that piece of work was really what helped shift this perspective and our collective realization that, yes, we can do all these great things from a social responsibility, environmental responsibility, in terms of how we run our business and how, you know, how we treat our people and communities. But probably the most important and powerful impact that we can have is how we use our technology and the impact that we have and the, 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 the lives that we change as a result through our technology. You are on a panel here at the Women Transforming Technology Conference that's mm. all about design thinking. And it's about yeah. design thinking in terms of leadership and your approach to management, but also your approach to your job and, yeah. and, and devising, in your case, a sustainability strategy. Yeah. Talk about design thinking yeah. and how it's changed your, the way you go about things. Yeah. Uh, great. I, I'm personally a, a big fan of design thinking, and um, you know, it's it's one of those uh, methodologies or uh, experiences. When you experience it, you really see the power of it. And um, you know, when when we were working in the foundation, um, at the beginning of of uh, this work, we pulled in some design thinking experts to help us just frame a problem that we were trying to solve. Um, and that experience really resonated with me and it stuck with me in these ideas of um, you know, how you go from, from kind of brainstorm, big picture thinking to actually impact an outcome. So uh, just break it down for our viewers, design thinking, elevator, elevator pitch, what is sure, it? <laughs> sure, so it starts with a sort of four key principles. Um, it's about empathy, starting with empathy, um, thinking about the problem you're trying to solve, um, thirdly, uh, uh, implementing, so rapid rapid prototyping, and then testing again, so lots of testing, um, before you come to the impact um, and the outcome. And it's this iterative process, kind of building something, testing it, going back and building it again. But I think the, the biggest takeaway for me and what I learned about it that I applied to leadership is this idea of empathy. And I think we often think of empathy as feeling sorry for, but it's not. It's mm. really, to me, empathy is radical questioning and radically asking yourself, um, challenging your assumptions and trying to see what others see. And I think it's that, that shift and that, that shift of mindset that's so powerful. And, and for me, applying that to my work um, shows up all the time in whether I'm in a meeting, um, whether I am you know, running a team, um, whether we were doing the strategy for sustainability. It's constantly asking the questions, asking why. I think that that's for me is the thing that I, I really appreciate about design thinking and um, try to bring it to everything that I do. From a product standpoint, the empathy is for the end user, for the customer, yes. the person who is going to be using the product. Yeah. But when it comes to creating a sustainability strategy, who, who are you empathizing with? Yeah, that's it. So, you know, again, that this word empathy, I think, is, is it's it tricky. trips people it up, trips yeah. Because you, because we think it means feeling sorry for, right? But no, it's about seeing the other. So, because what we were doing is taking this much wider angle view on sustainability. So, in other words, it's not about the real estate organization or about you know turning off the lights in our operations. It's about the whole business. So, for me, empathy was is about stepping trying to step into other people's shoes and working with stakeholders across the business. So not just in our real estate and operations, but in the business, in HR, in legal, across all of the functions and asking, asking questions and listening to stakeholders and really trying to understand their point of view on the business so that I can connect what they care about to ultimately the sustainability strategy. Talk about design thinking in an approach to leadership, and particularly in light of why we're here, women transforming technology. Um, how, does it, how does it work when you're on a team? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's, it, is, it starts with that individual. It starts with um, empathy always and, and the why, and really trying to understand others, the people that you're working with, and you know, when I say empathy, I think about trying to see others. And seeing, part of seeing others is knowing what their strengths are and knowing what they're uniquely placed to do. So in working with a team, I think that is a great leadership skill is to 
really know and understand your team um, and to, to build a team that functions really well together. Um, that skill, I think, is, is irreplaceable in, in, in leadership. And what about for the person who's being led? So the person who, yeah. who's, who's not quite the manager yet, maybe earlier in her career, yeah. how can she use design thinking uh, and empathize both with her, her colleagues and her customers, but also perhaps her manager too, in terms of not only moving the product forward, but also moving her career forward? Yeah, you know, the speaker in the panel um, just uh, we just listened to uh, Lynn Christensen talked about um, the importance of understanding the needs of others and how powerful that can be um, when you're trying to get work done and, and have an influence. So she, she gave an example which I loved about you know, often you know, we're, we're trying to prove ourselves, right? Especially as young women in the workforce. Um, and there is an important element of, of confidence and all of those good things that we're talking about here. But I think the other element of what she was getting at is understanding, you know, when you're giving a presentation or you're talking about um, a, a product or an, an, an idea, um, to think about who you're talking to and to make sure that you, when you think about your, your, your message and um, your presentation, to be designing your talk, to use design thinking, designing your talk with that person in mind. And that can be a really powerful way to have yourself seen um, as a potential, as, as in a future leader. In terms of how you are thinking about your VMware sustainability strategy and the way other companies are, what, and I don't want this to turn into a school marmish, other companies should follow VMware's lead, but at the same time, what would your advice be to other companies that, that are seeing what you're doing, uh, and, and for example, putting sustainability in the office of the yeah. CTO? What other differences in terms of how you approach sustainability could other companies mimic? For the, sure. for the good of all for, of us. For the good of all, absolutely. Right. I, I think that's a really important question because you know, I think there's, there's a role for corporate social responsibility and philanthropy and sustainability and you know I think every company is unique and in, in depending on, on their market and, and their industry but ultimately when we think about trying to create a, a positive impact on the world and to frankly to address some of the world's most pressing challenges it really does require the combination of what I talk about, this collective impact um, and the, the skills and competencies that business can bring to that really are in, in what, they, what they offer to the world. And often that isn't necessarily just philanthropy. It can be a combination of those things. So I, my, you know, my, my um, perspective on this is really about thinking about where your unique competencies as a company and a business overlap with the world's great needs. And finding that sweet spot is where I believe companies can have the biggest impact. One of the other elements of sustainability strategy is, is making sure that companies are committed to diversity and inclusion. And is there, is there a way that you're working on that here at VMware as part of a sustainability strategy or is that more of an HR function? I mean, Actually, how does it all yeah. work together? Yeah, you know, I, the, the work that we're doing at VMware on diversity and inclusion is very much part of this ethos of collective impact because it's really pulling and connecting these elements of the work that we're doing inside the company, in different, different departments, into this legacy of what I call net positive, a net positive impact. So diversity and inclusion is part of that um, in a really important way and this is what this conference today is really all about. It's bringing a community of women together um, who are passionate and committed to making an impact in technology and, and leaving that positive legacy. Um, and so, you know, for me personally, um, you know, today's really, really um, quite poignant, actually. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I'm a mom, I'm, I, and I'm also the daughter of a farmer, and um, I'm going to get choked up, <laughs> and a school teacher. And you're going to meet Gloria Steinem <laughs> later today, Nicola. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I can pile on, but. No, absolutely, but <laughs> well this is, this is what's so poignant for me, is you know, I grew up in the shadow of apartheid, and I think that in a very patriarchal society, but my mom was very influenced by Gloria Steinem, and, um, and 
her fierceness about education for girls was really ultimately, I think, had an impact on me, um, not only finishing high school, but going on to get a four-year degree and a PhD, and ultimately, you know, a South African woman finding herself in Silicon Valley today right. is, is, an, is a testament to Gloria and to my mom mm -hmm. and all the women who have forged this path for us. Um, and so today is an opportunity, I think, in, in some ways to say thank you, me personally, to say thank you to Gloria and, and those women who have forged the path. But I think today is also important in the recognition that there is this community that is growing, a community of women who are having an impact in technology. But I think the other element is that we realize that our work is not done. Right, and, um, and that's what today is all about, is this community of women who are carrying the torch um, because our work isn't done. So, yes, I mean, there, there is that balance. There's this gratitude on one end yes. of, of, of our forebears and what they've uh, sacrificed for us yeah. to be where we are. Yeah. But then at the other hand, particularly, as you said, you grew up in the shadow of apartheid, and now we have Donald Trump as president, and we're hearing a lot of, um, uh, of, of scary uh, notions coming yeah. from the, the White House right now. So there is also this other, this other side to it, which is feeling anger and, 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 a, and a real mobilization to rise up. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, Caro was really eloquent about that this morning. And, you know, I think it's complex, right? It, it, this, is, this is multiple facets and multiple forces at play. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it is really, really important um, to be clear about our values and to be clear about um, the impact that we, that we want to leave in the world and finding a community of people around which um, to focus our energies. Perfect words to end on. Nicola Ica, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We will return with theCUBE's coverage of women transforming technology here at VMware.